your your holiness uh, uh, dear guests uh, my name is Gabo Karsai. I'm a managing director of Mind and Life Europe. And it's a real privilege for us to have this opportunity uh, to spend time with your holiness, uh, to have a discussion on dialogue for a better world, remembering uh, our friend Francisco Varela. I would also like to greet all friends here, members and friends of the Mind and Life family in Europe, in the US and globally. Thank you all for joining. Uh, and I would like to welcome everybody who is following us live on YouTube or any other platform. It was 20 years ago on May 28th, 2001, when our dear friend, co-founder of Mind and Life, Francisco Varela passed away. Mind and Life Europe, Europe is paying tribute to him this year with a number of events, including the webinar series, Francisco and Friends, an embodiment of relationship that we are starting today with this meeting. We know that your holiness developed and maintained a very special relationship with Francisco Varela, leading to the creation of Mind and Life. Today, we would like to invite you to remember him and the great work you initiated together. Our panelists in the discussion with Your Holiness are Amy Cohen Varela, a clinical psychologist, chair of the board at Mind and Life Europe, Pierre Luigi Luisi, professor emeritus of biochemistry at the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, Elena Antonova, a senior lecturer in psychology at Bruno University, London, and uh, Tuptan Jimpala, Your Holiness principal English translator. Chair of the Board at Mind and Life Institute. Uh, we will have uh, six main questions today, but before starting our discussion with Luigi, we would like to show your holiness some photos from the meetings you had with Francisco Varela and all other friends. Let's remember those days together. Thank you for taking the time to look at these photos and uh, great memories. And now I would like to invite uh, Luigi to start the discussion with you, Your Holiness. I guess to unmute. Luigi, please unmute yourself. Luigi, please unmute yourself. Sound, sound. Yes, Luigi, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you hear me now? That's yes. wonderful. Uh, I was saying that I had the privilege to be present at the meeting in 1983 uh, in Alpbach. Austria, where you and Francisco Varela met for the first time. It was a great meeting, probably the first in the world on science and spirituality. 
a great atmosphere of love and friendship among all participants. And in this atmosphere of friendship, we notice, we admire the flourishing of a new friendship, the one between you and uh, Francisco Barella, a friendship who, which was very beneficial to all of us. But from this, the first question, what was that made this friendship? What was that attract you to have this profound relation with a young scientist who at that time was not even very famous in the world? So why this friendship? What is the origin of that? <clears throat> Since my, I was a very, very young age, uh, childhood, I have interest about mechanic. Uh, and, and then I have one sort of uh, small movie project, projector, projector. which, which the bronze Tajin Dalai Lama. So I uh, uh, develop curiosity. The, there are small battery in the in the in the movie projector. So how to produce electricity? The some small motor moving. Then uh, uh, light, what's it, the electricity come. So I develop some sort of interest. Electricity, you see, what is the nature of electricity? And then the uh, certain sort of uh, material moving, then electricity develop. So I have some keen interest. Uh, meantime, of course, the, from childhood, I study uh, Buddhist philosophy. Uh, so then when I met Verala, he, one way, is a scientist. But at the same time, he also sort of showing his deep interest about Buddhism. So often he mentioned uh, when we discuss uh, uh, when a subject about Buddhism, then he say, now I have the Buddhist cap, <laughs> then say something about Buddhism. Buddhist philosophy. Uh, then uh, he 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 say, now cape of science, scientist. Yes. Then he mentioned about science. So I notice that person is something. Uh, really, I need who have some knowledge uh, or interest about Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist dharma, at the same time, profession as a scientist. Uh, so then, I also, you see, I think eventually, I also, you see, uh, uh, pattern his, or the way, when I speak about Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist logic, Buddhist cap, <laughs> then about science, uh, particularly the uh, mental science, science of mind, particularly emotion. Then 
my head, Buddhist uh, head, or uh, more thicker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, my lifetime, he, one of the person who really uh, very much impressed me, and I always remember him. So this picture always uh, in, in my room. I always keep uh, this picture. So then as a Buddhist, we believe life after life because you see, there is a logical approach. The, every phenomena which moving, changing, there must be causes. So this physical, uh, all, uh, naturally, causes. Uh, then, with this brain, brain alone is uh, not so much sophisticated. I think our mind, human mind, is very, very sophisticated. So we can think, or we can meditate, we can change through sort of also the meditation, change our mind, and through that way, uh, it brings really inner peace. So uh, now, Uh, eventually, I develop uh, also the meeting with a lot of scientists. And when we talk, it seems science from West, uh, Western world uh, religion is Christianity mainly, and to some extent Islam. And Judaism, uh, but not much talk about uh, human mind, about human emotion. Uh, in order to tackle our emotion, we should have fuller knowledge about the whole system of emotion or mind. So uh, now, uh, as you see, uh, Lady Verala, you see, uh, showed me science and Buddhist faith can go side by side. So I now actually I follow the pattern of uh, Lady Verala. <laughs> So, uh, so we uh, believe life after life. I'm quite sure Verela's next life, I'm quite sure among some of my close friends' family, I'm quite sure. So, uh, whether uh, he can recognize me or there's some mentally, some close feeling must be there because of past life's sort of experience. Since my, my own case, when I was very young, two, three years old, uh, some people who are uh, working uh, with Thajan Dalai Lama, when they come, I recognize. So we are same, same human being. 
of course, some karmic link. Uh, and some, I think, uh, the uh, mental uh, ability. There are some differences. Otherwise, we are same human being, uh, same sentient being. Uh, within sentient being, we are same human being. Then, uh, as Verala believe, you see, Dharma. So, life after life, definitely some connection. And since within this life, we develop some special, uh, I'll say, uh, connection. So I'm quite sure. Uh, perhaps within, if I remain another 10, 20 years, I may meet one child who express something special about Verala. <laughs> possible, possible. So like that. So I, uh, so I, today, I very, very uh, happy and proud to discuss something about my long-time old friend. And with the Verera's uh, wife, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank Not you this. Very, hmm? Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Holiness. Thank you. The subject, Kasa, di dialogue for a better world. This subject, very essential, very important. Oh. Now, today's world, in spite of many material development, but material development, including weapon, oh, you see, too much emphasis, my nation, my country. Oh. So today, many leaders, oh, you see, very much thinking about their own nation. So when another human a group create, showing some different views or uh, different attitude, then we easily call them our uh, enemy. Uh, among the scientists, uh, genuine scientists, they mainly concern about a human being not my nation or my religious group like Verala. So, so therefore, uh, now today, the uh, world, in spite of many <coughs> material development, but mentally, emotionally, is it too much thinking, we, we, I, I, uh, that creates, uh, or say, my friend, my enemy. So, you see, we uh, too much emphasis. Emotional, emotional level, we and they. Uh, this uh, thinking, broadly speaking, oh. Uh, we can change that. One of my commitment is oneness of seven billion human beings. We all same human being. 
And practically also, we have to live together on this small planet. And then uh, economy also. Now, global economy. Uh, there's no national boundary, national boundary. The East uh, depend West. Uh, northern world depend Southern world. That's now reality. We have to live together. Uh, our economy, uh, you see, interdependent. In economy field, uh, you cannot sort of count uh, national basis. Oh, or then, on top of that, now climate condition. Now global level, climate becoming warmer, warmer, warmer. So these, uh, I say. Uh, give us some kind of pressure. Now we have to work together. Uh, not talking my nation, their nation. We must talk oneness of seven billion human beings. Then a lot of, in, in previous century, uh, and the beginning of this century, too many sort of violence uh, on the basis of Nation, my nation, my nation. I all, often use in mentioning, look, European Union, France, uh, German. You see, First World War, Second World War, really arch enemy. But after S Second World War, and under the leadership of Ardenna, uh, the goal, uh, they realize now no use, we kill each other. We have to work together. So, mainly these, uh, as far as I know, mainly these two persons initiated European Union. So, since the European Union developed no longer any killing among the uh, member states. So, at one continent, uh, you see, in, in through centuries, killing, fighting, now under new circumstances, now they develop union. So why not we, uh, eventually, the whole world, or, uh, some kind of union, or oh. instead of saying uh, my nation, my nation, but rather we, we, we. So that's my, my own commitment. And there's no other choice. I become refugee. <laughs> so, you see, I live in India, you see, no longer my nation, my, but India, uh, of course, through century, we have some special connection. So I always consider India, we have a special connection in any way, our neighbor country. All our knowledge, uh, much knowledge come from India. So therefore, feeling we are same. Uh, with this feeling, in India also, you see, I feel this is ancient our home. All uh, also the philosophical, philosophical knowledge, these things come from India. So therefore, uh, the feeling of oneness is really gives me comfortable. Uh, and also, you see, where, wherever I go, different country, different continent, 
I always carry with the feeling same human being. Uh, so wherever I go, I always smile, smile. I feel same human brothers, sisters. So according to my own experience, you see, the concept of oneness of same human being of this planet really gives you inner peace, no longer fear, no longer distrust. Uh, religion is second, or city, second level. Whether believe religion or not, uh, within religion, believe in this religion, that religion, still religion of human being. So uh, we should emphasize oneness of seven billion human being. So, uh, so now, uh, my commitment, number one commitment, is promotion of concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. The second commitment is to all religion, in spite of different philosophy, different belief, all carry the same message, message of loving kindness. So uh, they use different philosophy, different concept in order to keep compassion, compassionate feeling. So all religion, different philosophy, the same purpose to develop a firm conviction about warm, warm-heartedness, like that. Uh, then my another commitment is uh, ecology. Within my own lifetime, or oh, in Tibet, uh, the older generation, you see, they say when they were young, they, during winter, those higher mountain around Lhasa, a lot of snow, then decade by decade, you see, reduce. So now the climate things are changing. Now we must uh, think oneness of human being. And Tibet case, uh, source of water, almost whole Asia, those big river, uh, Yangtze River, or Mekong River, or Barmabhutra, all these major river, which, uh, I'll say, uh, several billions life depend on this water. So uh, uh, now climate change uh, really very serious. Now we have to think. The I mean, Tibet case is we have to we have to I say uh, try to keep Tibetan ecology for uh, water sources of almost whole Asia like that. So now okay. Now, next question. Now, some questions, yes. Yes. Thank you. Me. Thank you very much, Your Holiness. Um, Francisco Varela and Your Holiness started Mind and Life with the great help of our good friend Adam Engel. You organized and participated in so many dialogues, dialogues being a principle for creating a sense of oneness um, between human beings. 
Um, and these dialogues that you started with Varela and Engel created a whole new field of research. My question is, given all of your responsibilities, why have you decided to spend so much time over many years, five days a week, sitting with scientists and, and scholars? And what benefits do you think that this work has brought to the world? Sebuji <laughs> Firstly, I am Buddhist. My daily sort of practice is thinking uh, all sentient beings' happiness. The so on my day to day basis, um, you know, one of my daily practices uh, involve um, saying some aspirational prayers. And one of my most, you know, sort of, you know, favorite prayer is the one by Shanti Deva, which reads, some of you are familiar, as long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, may I too remain and help dispel the sufferings of the world. And similarly, um, Nagarjuna's precious garland, where he talks about, may, you know, making an aspiration of prayer that may I be like the great elements of the natural world so that the sentient beings can, you know, partake and be, derive benefit from my existence. So this is the kind of prayers that I do. So on my part, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, one of the things that I always think about is in my own way, in humble way, whatever help I can bring to the world for the sentient beings, I should devote my life to that. Oh. <laughs> Changu Dart Oh, so Dr. Shen, 
so in my own daily practice, um, given that Tupten Jimpa is here, I'll speak a few words in Tibetan. Um, in my own daily practice, the, some of the key elements that I emphasize, one of which is a cultivation of awakening mind, which is part of what is called the vast practice. Then the other one is the profound view coming from the Nagarjuna's teachings. And in the uh, Bodhicitta, the awakening mind practice, one of the elements that are aspects that I really emphasize is the tra transmission coming from Shantideva, the teaching coming from Shantideva, which involves equalizing and exchanging of self and others, where you really cultivate uh, an attitude of caring for others' well-being. And Shantideva says that, uh, you know, if one is not able to switch the perception of self and others and be concerned about others' well-being, and let alone attainment of Buddhahood, even in this life, there will be no real joy, no real happiness. Uh, and then he goes on to say that, therefore, you know, by you know, riding the, the sort of the uh, horse of uh, Buddhicitta, awakening mind, you know, someone can travel from a place of joy to joy. You know, what intelligent, wise person would not want to embark on such a journey? So on the opposite side, he goes on to say that if you look at this, all the miseries in the world, sufferings in the world, they're all rooted in self-centered attitude. Um, and all the happiness that are in the world really are rooted in altruistic aspirations and intention. And this really seems to be really true because if you think about all the problems that we see in the world, you know, a lot of them are rooted in self-centeredness, starting from big I and me. And then as you expand that, it becomes my country and my people. And this me and mine is really what creates all that division and division then creates the conflict. So at this point in our history of humanity, you know, let let's, you know, let us keep aside the possibility of you know caring for all sentient beings, but at least we should be able to develop an attitude that would include in our identity all human beings, thinking in terms of we the human being. And in this way, you know, once we're able to develop that kind of affinity with our fellow human beings and think in more collective terms of us as human species, human beings, then we will be able to really change the way we behave and change the way we think and also begin to really avoid harming others. Thank you, Your Holiness. Oh, yeah. What an inspiring vision. Um, I think Elena has a question. Your Holiness, um, as you've mentioned, uh, Francisco Varela was very interested in Buddhism, not only as a method or for disciplined self-inquiry, but as a way of enriching our scientific understanding of the mind. Um, and as Amy noted, the, the dialogues between science and first person experience that both Your Holiness and Francisco Varela gave so much time to have created the new field of contemplative science. My question is, um, Your Holiness, have these dialogues with science affected your own thinking and possibly your Buddhist practice? And if so, how? As I briefly mentioned, since my childhood, I have some keen interest about science, technology. Uh, now, uh, eventually, I reach India. Uh, number of occasion meeting with scientists, and then uh, it become quite clear. Modern scientists, their knowledge about the human emotion 
very little. Human mind, very little. So therefore, uh, even you know the uh, emotion, the word emotion, uh, the simply one word emotion, emotion. <laughs> uh, according uh, Buddhist sort of or say the uh, psychology or Buddhist sort of text about mind emotion. Uh, then a lurinal, simjung of churches, Kudunga, Yunginga, Gaochu, Sanyu, Yunin, Yushin, Yushi, Sadi, Yimji, Wustang, Dua. In this emotion, emotions, and sick to be a total chicken, but a cut came to go. Chasagata, Chasaga, not under some common ripper. Me, not a song, the emotion chain, we are it. So that emotion, or chick, not a so you tell her, chick, she did on your chick, emotion, you are there, Nihala, some common ripper, not on the giddy, chick, shamba, cheche. Anything, eh? The so um, one of the things is that, for example, um, you know, when you converse with Western scientists, contemporary scientists, um, you know, we all agree that, um, you know, emotion is very important because emotion is often the source of a lot of our problems. Um, but then the word emotion seemed to conjure this somewhat monolithic uh, uh, entity. But compared to that, if you look at the Buddhist uh, uh, equivalent of psychology, such as Abhidharma, then there's a much more kind of, you know, granular uh, description of our experience. For example, in the Abhidharma uh, taxonomy, one of the lists, one of the taxonomy lists uh, 51 such mental factors. And within the 51, among the 51, there are separate categories. For example, the five factors that are omnipresent to every experience and, you know, and, and so on and so forth, uh, including categories that are, you know, more afflictive in nature. Uh, so, you know, we can see there's a much more granular a, a sort of more detailed understanding of our experience. And this, I think, is very important because we all agree that emotion is often a source of our problem. Um, and within emotion, you know, if we are, if we are to seek uh, techniques to regulate and, and deal with our emotions, then we need, in, we need to ground that approach in a deeper, fine understanding of the world of emotion as we experience them. And within emotion, there are certain types of emotions which are more afflictive in their nature, which are more destructive as they arise. And then what are their antidotes? You know, how can we apply those antidotes? Similarly, there are, within the world of emotion, there are more constructive ones, such as loving kindness, compassion, and so on and so forth. Then we can ask the question, what is their nature? How can we cultivate them and enhance them? So... In this way, uh, I think we can make some progress through the, through the conversation and collaboration. And in Buddhism, for example, even though uh, as a spiritual path, uh, there is a role for faith, an important role for faith. But in Buddhism, you know, a faith needs to be grounded in understanding. So wisdom has to underpin the faith. So if one's conviction that arises in the Dharma has to be grounded in understanding and wisdom. So th this is one of the reasons why I often say that the approach in Buddhism, the general approach, is actually quite similar to the way in which it's, you know, a scientist would approach uh, a, a problem or, or a topic. Yes, <laughs> 
kuruyordu. Çıktı, dizüt edildi de Science Fan'e çıktı. Kasorda benzo yargıda, kuruyu yargıda mangucu Science Fan'e ko yungu yarva dili kurdu ha. Da dene da zor zor ya tuydu zane en sem ki bu ki tıkana da daha yarva da. Şunu bu yargıda ne? Semle diye şunu samne, ha kadangel lübü çeden da tele dene sem ki bu şunu samne da miyur di tırba, da sem kora sudu karne, ha eni namda drama da emotion drama da yapar diye söyledi, şimdi sahip tol yemci tane, eni bana kontrol da bu sem duygen de o kontrol eder ha, sata kontrol de melam kevni. Kongru şiho yüzyılda bir mayın var. Da kongru gençler oku duğu spa samtağına ko şirte açık. Da çamcı yönde de duğu samtağına yani ko çamcı lüngu yöne çanı ve da sim ki şirte zamda masaya bir lüvü çözeyle peyong. Kongru sim çuğa sotu masaya bir rinbe rinbe ki suguyu madde çayong edecek. Sadece yendi, da kadın aran samalı şey dikin döngü şeyleri, sadece sence türlü türlü zorunuz şeyler ki amare, da milya samlı tanya şeyi var yendi sana da samlı tanı da şey ne Türkiye'de tıse diyor, yani samlı tanı hayjinci hayjin sa, yani lübü hayjin. That's all some hygiene de cheddar Jungsa de Garagi, Pedger, the Garagi Juneri, Ahimsa, and the Corona said the Garal, the lost shed, some dozen corner that did do a Chesangatati, Nangwe Shedi, Dineba, Garo Kene, and Tagilayagi, so some down Chabasia, the Keshabush, Sonyo in the Zane. Da, çünkü şirket namcığı şirket utanı, yani semge şirdi yaya, da di duyun kutuğa. Çazanga, çazanga da verilen son yadırı da diğin deme zamulucu şokuna, çeşo utanı semge şirdi zayıcı da, çenge utanı ki kasur da. So, um, if we if we look at um, you know our human aspirations, um, you know we all aspire for a good health, and uh, and science has clearly been very important uh, in that regard. You know, science, um, you know, has given us amazing knowledge about the human body and health. Um, and and also, um, you know, science has also given us extensive knowledge about the physical world that we live in, and you know the relationship between our human uh, life and the physical environment, and so on and so forth. So uh, um, the the experience of happiness that we seek at the level of body experience, you know, to a large extent, science is able to fulfill it. But if you look deeper into human aspirations, our aspirations are really, you know, not just about physical well-being or pros economic prosperity, but we actually as human beings, we aspire for happiness, we aspire for peace, we aspire for uh, a genuine joy. And, and those really needs to, come, needs to come from the mind itself. It is really something that can only arise, uh, you know, by taking care of our mind. And just as we briefly talked about how emotion is often the source of problem, but also the solution to the problem of emotion, sadness, unhappiness, really lies also within the human mind itself. And that techniques, that solution uh, would require a deep understanding of how the mind works, uh, you know, and, and having a fine, you know, sort of differentiation um, at, the, at the level of the mind. For example, uh, let's take anger as an example. Anger is often a source of problem for many of us. But anger, we cannot wish it away 
by praying, may, may anger do not arise in me. Anger can only be tackled by looking at the nature of anger. What are the, what are the triggers for anger for me? What are the causes and conditions? And how does it arise? And then also reflecting upon its you know, destructive consequences. If I do not you know, regulate my anger, what are the consequences it lead to? And in these way, we begin to have something in the form of a kind of an antidote against anger. Similarly, uh, on the positive side, we admire loving kindness, compassion, and so forth. And these also, you know, we cannot simply wish that they arise in us. You know, we need to cultivate them. And also part of the cultivation would involve, you know, contemplating deeply on the value and the benefits of these constructive emotions in us, how something like loving kindness and compassion opens our heart, lays a foundation for a healthy relationship, and how that promotes not just a, a peace of mind and joy, but also a, even a physical health. You know, on the contrary, we know anger can also undermine our physical health. So learning in these ways you know, would involve having a deep, self-inquiry and understanding of our own mind through a kind of a first person approach. So here, you know, I really agree with Varela because in the end, you know, a genuine happiness, a true joy is going to be a function of wisdom, you know, that is derived from understanding one's own mind and, and it's working. So Varela often talks about how if we are to truly create a world where human beings are happy, it needs to combine both science and spiritual you know, approach. And this, I think, is true. So, <laughs> Tempot what uh academic Dilia, so um, one of my really interest is really not so much to promote, um, you know, a spirituality as a religious teaching, but really to see if we can bring it in a more secular format, particularly in the education field, because we know from personal experience and also in contemporary secular education systems, we know 
children go through education. We know children can train their brain, uh, you know, develop their intellectual capacity, uh, even, you know, strengthen their memory capacity to, you know, memorize a lot of stuff and so forth. So a lot of these are already being done. But in the, in the Indian tradition, ancient Indian tradition, there are also quite a lot of emphasis on the training of the mind. For example, in, you know, in, we, in, the, in the Indian Indian and Tibetan tradition, we speak of uh, different aspects or forms of in in intelligence. So there is the swift intelligence where some people are able to think through very fast. Then there is a penetrating uh, intelligence where people are able to go through deep into kind of, you know, into a topic, uh, in a deep inquiry. And there is also what is known as the vast intelligence where one is able to approach a topic in a much more horizontal way in a, in a comprehensive approach. So there are mental training which really help us enhance these different aspects of, of our in intellect. So, uh, and, and these have nothing to do with the religion. And, and so clearly these are secular, you know, universal forms of education. And Indian tradition is very rich in this regard. So my, one of my, um, you know, hope is, and, and also, also we know that as human beings, because of the special brain that we have, we have natural capacities for many of these, but those can be enhanced through training. So one of the hopes that I have is that once um, the, our world begins to come out of the pand current pandemic situation, one you know, hope that I have is to spend some time in Delhi, New Delhi, uh, where uh, I will have the opportunity to sit down with, you know, quite a lot of uh, professors from different universities and really sort of focus on this question of how can we tap into the ancient Indian knowledge tradition and extract aspects of their mental training that can help enhance these you know, uh, aspects that we are talking about and which can then be brought in a more secular format in the education, um, you know, for the, for the younger generation itself, yeah. Yeah, uh, to a next question. Next, next question. Um, Your Holiness, somehow, <clears throat> somehow related to the question of uh, mind, is the interest of Francisco Varela to bring the personal experience of the scientist into the picture and understanding of science itself. And uh, I believe it is interesting that some aspects of modern science, like quantum mechanics, for example, shows in a very dramatic way how important is the action and mind of the experimentally scientist into the so-called results. And uh, this uh, kind of personal um, influence, it uh, was felt very much in all uh, our mind and life dialogues. And certainly science has expanded a lot. And the question that I would like to ask you, uh, as science expands, also our questions you know, increase. Is there any particular science questions that you would like to see answered fully by scientists in the next uh, time. Is there something that you really would like in terms of science to be explained? I don't know, consciousness or anything more practical? Tadatiri, <laughs> 
Seven So, um, as a result of um, several decades of my dialogue with scientists, um, one impression that I got um, from these dialogues is that um, contemporary modern science, uh, Western science, as it stands, um, is heavily oriented towards kind of a, um, a material uh, vision of the world. Um, in fact, the whole field of study, the object of study uh, and inquiry is really modeled on material objects, material, material phenomena, uh, including even when we talk about human experience, brain is the main you know, object of study. Um, and, and the activity of the brain, the chemistry of the brain. So it's, it's all about the brain. Um, and there is hardly any uh, attempt to really understand what is supported by the brain, which is the experience part of it, which is, you know, whether we call it consciousness, mind, or... Uh, and the interesting thing about that phenomenon is that actually, if you don't take into account the subjectivity the subjective dimension of the felt experience of consciousness, uh, looking at the brain alone, which is the basis of that experience, I don't think is going to give us a full picture. Um, uh, so because our scientific paradigm and the entire approach will be still confined within the material paradigm, uh, which is always, you know, kind of presupposes some kind of measurability uh, observation from outside, um, you know, uh, all of this. And it will leave out uh, what is the unique characteristic of consciousness or mind, which is the felt subjective dimension. So uh, I, I think here, the science as it stands now doesn't seem to have a way of uh, approaching this. And here, I feel the ancient Indian tradition, uh, which has a very rich mind science, and a large part of that description is really from the subjective, taking into account the subjective 
dimension, I think can contribute. So my hope um, is that uh, gradually science will be able to get a handle because we're not talking about rebirth. We're not talking about religion, religious ideal, religious belief. We're essentially talking about our everyday experience of all human beings. You know, all human beings wish to have uh, a peace of mind. Uh, we seek joy. And including, you know, when we think about the, you know, joy or global peace or individual personal peace or peace and happiness at the family level or the society level, ultimately all boils down to a state of mind. You know, whether the state of mind is disturbed, dominated by negative emotions, which leads to all sorts of problems, or whether state of mind is peaceful, calm, and compassionate, which then give rise to another set of consequences. So it all hangs on really the state of mind um, of society, human beings, individuals. So my hope is that, you know, eventually science will be able to really tackle that and find a way to not only explain, but also um, show, you know, uh, come up with some uh, uh, programs at, in, in the schools where children, it will become part of the normal education where children learn skills about cultivating peace in their mind, happiness, compassion, and these qualities, which are really important for human, human life. So that's, that's my wish and my hope. Next question. Uh, Your Holiness embodies a delicate balance of analytical and contemplative approach to the first person inquiry into the nature of mind. Um, and as Your Holiness recounted, Francisco Varela too wore both hats and very comfortably. Um, young scientists. Um, who are interested in contemplative science often find it challenging to combine the analytical method and contemplative experience without a conflict, both professionally and personally. My question is, would your holiness have any advice for the young scientists on how they can use their analytical skills and also open themselves up to contemplative experience. And there is a terrible and a good yuka number and shinky and a varela gay chick nancho in Yamlenda, Terry Sundetone, Missikena or Watinashi, than the terrible and the Shoba Mampuchi de Revachi or the Nakranzu, Serigi, Jebe Tablamlia. Uh Oh, <coughs> 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 どこ<音><音><音><音> Uh, 
Shidi Yang Yag, Kuro Zokar Toka. Better Junju ne, Dison Yari. So so in the so not a song, a Taudi, the Savoko Yagi, and a ten chores. Did they in the Taudi, Ranga Gelishin in the Sene, Sungutua? Send them Jung as a Taos of the bed, Chick Sunda, Rungurchik Ton and Ten, a bear called Naksum Nesson or some Kigi or what. The Taudi, Savoko Betenri, Susu Gelishin in the Wurris and Dukes Love in the Sane. So um, the simple fact is, you know, scientists are also human beings like all of us. Um, and just as all of us, scientists also have problems of emotion. As human beings, scientists also wish for finding a peace in their mind. So I think, you know, one thing that would be important for the scientist is to really just um, pay attention to the need, important need of finding an inner peace. And then the inner peace really needs to be cultivated. And part of that would involve a self-inquiry and getting some kind of experiential understanding of your own mind. So I think that those are probably the ways in which, um, you know, one could say that the analytic approach and the more contemplative approach can come together because the, the contemplative approach helps the analytic approach. And also the analytic approach also help, um, you know, contemplative approach as well. And, and, and maybe this is the reason why, you know, over the years as our dialogues kind of, you know, continue, we are beginning to see more and more scientists actually taking serious professional interest in the whole question of mental well-being and also mind-based approach to cultivating mental well-being. So this is a consequence of these kind of dialogues where there is an appreciation of the need for some kind of mind-based approach. Um, so, and, and part of that is really a self-inquiry. For example, as I said earlier, you know, if anger is a problem that, you know, disturbs our peace of mind, then, you know, through a self-inquiry, we look at the nature of anger. How does it arise? What are the triggers for me? And then find a way to uh, approach it. And then also use important, you know, for example, like Shantideva uses, um, you know, important shifts in our perspective. For example, one of the, uh, in one of his uh, chapters in, in Guide to the Bodhisattva Way, he talks about, you know, in dealing with our, strong emotional, negative emotion towards our, what we call anger, uh, enemy or adversary. He actually says that from the point of view of cultivating patience, anger is your best teacher. So instead of feeling resentful, you should feel grateful towards the, your enemy, giving you the opportunity to practice patience. So when you, you know, think about it, it really shifts you know, turns your normal attitude and perspective upside down. And that kind of jolts your mind and it opens up a new way of seeing, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, the other person. So it is in these ways, actually, um, you know, a real change can take inside um, ourselves. Yeah. In today, <coughs> Pajir, oh. That the Shasa de Nangbejun in Shegiori, uh, Damebe Tawa Sakisit. So Tangazu Kondus Rizan and Nasa Shuksum Sligua Chata Lokariki de Nasa Shuksum Sligua. That Telea Umurjitan or so on, Naji, eh? Pum and Pumbul Mare Casa, Gibusem in Chumai, Mamie Lum and Nangami. Namshin any, 
So another aspect of um, this kind of inquiry um, also should involve, uh, although the teaching is coming from Buddhist sources, I'm talking about the teaching on emptiness, um, one of the important aspects of that inquiry needs to involve uh, a willingness to deeply question uh, what do we, what is it that when I think of I and me, am I referring to? What is that I and me, which we feel so strongly? Because when we feel strong emotions such as anger or attachment, uh, it is you know, premised upon uh, an assumption of there being a real me uh, for whose sake you are reacting emotionally. So uh, in, in, in the Buddhist text, for example, in uh, Nagarjuna's Precious Garland, uh, he actually suggests that we go through a self-inquiry that involve, you know, probing deeply into each of the constitutive elements that make up our existence, you know, in terms of the six elements and so on and so forth, and then ask which one is the real me. And once you, you know, dissect in this way and rule out each and every single candidate, then you get to a point where there is no such thing as me. Um, and similarly in uh, Nagarjuna's um, uh, um, treatise in the, on the middle way, um, in one of the chapters, he uses the same analysis um, in uh, deconstructing the concept of the Buddha, the Thakada. But we can use that to refer to ourselves and analyze the relationship between you know, ourselves and our body, mind, and the various other constitutive elements that make up our existence and ask whether each one of them, is it the relationship, is it the combination? Um, you know, so when you do that, you get to a point where what we previously assumed to be really solid, real, you know, undisputable is not really there. We, we cannot find anything that we can point our finger and say, that is the real me. And you know, that is the true self. So once you, uh, do that, it really sort of opens up. And so what, what is needed is a two-pronged approach. One is looking at the negative emotions themselves, the afflictions such as attachment and anger, and you know, contemplating their destructive consequences in this way, and then applying their specific antidotes. But at the same time, you should also, as part of that approach, um, you know, uh, do this inquiry into uh, questioning the assumption underlying our strong negative emotions, which is this belief in a real solid me that is out that is objectively there. And so in this way, you know, we are kind of um, undermining the very basis upon which we ground our strong negative emotions. So in, uh, I, I think so when you do this way, uh, it really has an impact, um, you know, open, opening up and also lessening and the strong negative emotions that we do that tends to dominate our reaction uh, to situations. 
kara nyomot nyomong jiti jiti kota chimi yiji namdo tu cha de wa jita cha de wa jiti zane kodu shiru ke ta jiti sorbe shiru ke tu spa cha yona kotsu ji kasure ko shiru ashma to te mede wa jiti wa te da tabji cha de zu jadi ya jibe chen ke da ko kana ga zo emotion ta ga kana rangjin zi nyoru ta shenji zi shukshur ta she tu ro te a jire ta nyomu de zu jadi da du jibe gen du sane ene da de la pa cha ba che yin du ene ko da ne cha da ge nyomu de ga zo pu ge chang ro she she da mir bu ji ge tu su ye yin na ene che le cha da ge se ga de ka ba do slo na ko kha ge ene go phur phur te ha ma do ka ge me de ji da sa ba cha de sha ta wa da so ene che ge de a sa ga che sa ga ma do she ka ge se se ha bi do ga cha sa ga de da a ta pe na da ka sa kan shi ngo bu de da na ma cha na ti yi da ge sha ngo le chu ru du nani ma yi ti shi ji de yi ta ya de la na ba cha me cha sa Tenni ko so ko ko shi ki ta da shen le ke wa ji me ba ri de ta ye tu ya ji mu ke ke wa han ge yi ba yo ru su ta wan me ba ba so me ba ma re su ngo bu tong bo su ni la so bo so lo ta na ma cha pa ya min zi chi de de ni su ni so do le she ba te ye na ba ki ju da ti shi ngo bu tong che ta na ya tu ni ta de ru ge ke wa yo ru su shen ni ta ha le ba ru sa de zu che u me ni shun ge cha ba cha zu che ha le ba chi ma de ni da ri sam ta de ge So um so earlier I forgot uh, uh, something that his holiness mentioned um he talked about how um um having conversations with some quantum physicist the quantum physicist were also telling him that through quantum mechanical understanding quantum mechanics and the logic behind it um it also makes it very difficult to assume an objective reality that is out there Uh, and it seems to suggest that we could use a similar type of a deconstructive process so that you know the very basis upon which we ground our strong attitudes like my enemy my 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 loved one that strong attachment and strong uh you know sort of uh, uh, anger towards our enemy can be sort of you know uh, undermined by questioning the very assumption behind these uh, negative emotions so so what this is pointing to is that if you look at many of the strong emotions that will cause us problem a lot of these strong emotions are really uh, uh, arise uh, uh, they come up from a kind of a false projection of certain attributes to the person or the, to the object so this because the projection is false by using the wisdom almost like a sword you can you know demolish the 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 construct that we project onto the object so this i think is 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 true um so um the pedagogic sons this the karo um thing is hasin hasin sadere pakwenyam so go jikyu tawa tanya de bo jikyu jesu do tawa ene uh tanya do kasa chu tan tan bo ke wa mi ke wa tawa en che tan je rang tu rang tu du su ko mi te wa tawa sa di di du je yun du che nga nga se a ke ke ji ngan zi ru ko ji pet ka su ta sa wa ru ka ke me de chi ki en ta shu de te ki sa dre en ngan zi ki ta ma ke ja ya a su sa ga che sa si ka lu ta ji du de ki du ba the shivuj peki do do samta ti ti shivuj peki so uh, so now i remember so his holiness was saying that imagine if you take your strong emotions like attachment and anger as an object of you know, a sort of a, your opponent in a debate and ask them say you know where is the self for whose sake that you are being so strong so emotional you know where is that 
And then if you keep asking questions, at some point you can reveal to the strong emotions that there is no such thing as a self, that they have been grasping with such strong grip. And then the, the, strong, the negative emotions would say, would, be, would feel embarrassed and they would say, maybe I was kidding. So, you know, so we can see how, you know, by using the logic of emptiness, we can actually, uh, you know, deeply question the assumptions behind many of these grasping that we have. And here, for example, uh, in um, Chantrakirti's um, Entering the Middle Way, he offers a series of, you know, arguments, which really challenges these, these deep assumptions to the point where we almost feel as if there is no such thing as self. You know, where, where am I? And then the question is, does that mean I do not exist? But then Chandrakirti goes on to say, you know, it's not that we are non-existent, but our existence is only a function of dependent origination. So he's sort of, you know, bringing both uh, sort of a more uh, a realistic uh, understanding of what we mean by existence but also demonstrating the false aspects of the objective reality that we attribute. And so these, you know, when we think along these lines, they are really truly powerful uh, in their impact on challenging many of the assumptions that often underpin our, you know, strong emotions, which lead us to trouble. And uh, <coughs> Tedalodusayana so for example, there are two passages in uh, Chandrakirti's Entering the Middle Way, which really um, it gives me both hope as well as courage. And these two passages actually in a form of a summary uh, shows how by cultivating insight into the nature of you know, reality and including ourself, uh, as well as cultivating the, the conventional aspect of our everyday experience. And through the combination of the knowledge of these, you know, both conventional truth and the ultimate truth, which he compares to the two wings of a bird, we will then be able to cruise across the space of reality and arrive at the destiny destination, which is the attainment of full enlightenment. Uh, and you know, uh, and, and so he's really pointing out the path to attaining a true cessation, a true lasting peace. And uh, and these kind of passages give me both hope as well as uh, courage as well. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Your Holiness, I have a question about friendship and dialogue and change. Friendship and dialogue were very important to Varela and to Your Holiness. The many mind and life dialogues have demonstrated that communication across traditions and across cultures can be cultivated. The crises and issues we are facing today are so global that we must think and work together as a human collective. My question is, how can mind and life further promote a sense of common humanity as well as the depth of interaction that is necessary for true connection and effective action? Uh, 
Chitu so um, here, when I talk about the oneness of humanity, um, you know, I'm not specifically thinking about, you know, from the Buddhist point of view, we are really thinking about the, the broader world. And, and here, you know, my own approach and, and, and emphasis is really to uh, uh, bring out the practical uh, need of the concept of oneness of humanity, uh, reminding ourselves the fact that, you know, whether we like it or not, you know, we are all sharing this one small planet. Mm -hmm. uh, and also another important fact is that, you know, our world that we are living in is truly interconnected, interdependent. So in this, in this interdependent world, then, you know, too much division based on strong our, us and strong them uh, is, really uh, mutually not beneficial, mutually destructive. And no one really wins uh, through this kind of strong division-based, you know, uh, being in the world, in, in, in this interconnected world. On the other hand, if we are willing to embrace this oneness of humanity, show affinity to people who are different from us, then uh, we really have a chance to rise above the differences and also, um, you know, create a world where both sides benefit. Both sides have a chance to live a, a more peace, peaceful life. So this is, this is the approach I use. And I think, you know, for the larger world, uh, you know, this is also a question of survival, um, you know, because survival depends upon uh, people getting along with each other in this interconnected world. So that, you know, emphasizing the practical nature and the urgent need is, is a more effective uh, strategy. And according to theistic religion, we all believe God, creator. Uh, so, so that's God truly our father. Uh, who creates whole world, whole humanity. So uh, from that viewpoint, we are children of same father, God. So if uh, we children from same father, among the children fighting, or killing, how feel our father? So, so uh, God as a creator and our father, you see, all children of one God, if we live happily together, then father feel happy. So, the, the, from the atheistic religious viewpoint, uh, we should live uh, friendly uh, and harmoniously 
So that's the best way to offer or say worship to God. Yeah. Hmm? So uh, Muslim, either Muslim or Hindus or Christians or Judaism and all believe one God. So we have to uh, live together happily with sense of brotherhood, sisterhood. Because uh, we all came from one father. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Holiness. I'm going to pass the mic to Gabor Karsai now to sum up for us today. Your Holiness, uh, this was the last question. Thank you so much. And we could not end on a better note. Um, thank you so much for your wisdom, for your care, and for your friendship. Uh, a friendship uh, can open up a lot of doors. Uh, Mind and Life was born from a friendship between Your Holiness and uh, Francisco Varela and uh, Adam Angle. A new field of study, a whole new field, contemplative science, was born from a friendship. So maybe a different world can be born from friendships too. And thank you so much for being a leading example of becoming our friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier, I really hoping uh, within my lifetime the reincarnation of late uh, Verala, I think I may meet. I really feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you. Thank you.